it's a great honor for me to be sitting here beside such a great journalist and uh, and Masi Ali Nejat, um, persons who will, are journalists in Europe and in particularly in the Netherlands um, can take a, a, a great example from their courage. Um, as uh, my own uh, story, I um, as I have written in my book, you can purchase my book. Uh, uh, I have written in my book, I was uh, walking to pass my uh, last exams on the uh, uh, high school, last high school exams. I was 17 years old, and uh, someone uh, ticked on my, uh, on my shoulder, I turned my, uh, my head, and I was looking through the barrel of a gun. Um, it was a classmate, and he uh, was ordered to arrest anyone he knew from the school who had other ideas than ideas of Ayatollah Khomeini. And this is the story of in uh, 1981. That was the first uh, day of my uh, prison. I have been uh, tortured for six months in different prisons. Um, and I, I have been witnessed uh, lots of executions. I have been, uh, 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 been put uh, in the row to be executed, but they didn't shoot at me, they shoot at the person beside me. Um, uh, and I was blindfolded, so I couldn't, I couldn't see whether they would shoot me or not. It's middle of the night. Um, Do you know why they didn't shoot you? Um, Afterwards, they were laughing and they told, uh, tonight was not your, your turn, uh, next, uh, next day. You are on the list for the next day, not for tonight. Uh, no, it happened several times. Um, and I couldn't bear the pressure when they made me believe. Uh, they confronted me with a classmate of me, the best friend of mine, and they told him in the same room when I was there, that they arrested him because, uh, because of me, because I told them that he, uh, 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 that's the reason he was arrested. And I thought, I can, I can now say, okay, uh, this is a lie, but I didn't say that. I, I thought, no, after this interrogation, they, they take us to the prison and I can tell to him. The same night they hanged him. So he died with the science that his death is my, my, uh, my fault. Your fault, yeah. So I committed suicide because I couldn't live with that knowledge. Uh, after that, uh, uh, I uh, landed in a uh, psychiatrist hospital. And from the psychiatric hospital, I fled. I was one and a half year uh, was in, uh, living secretly in Iran. And then I walked to Turkey. The Turkish border police shoot at us. I was in Turkey for several weeks in a prison. After that, uh, they released me and I could, uh, could flee to the Netherlands. But your family was still in Iran. My family was there. They arrested my father. Uh, they tortured <coughs> him. Uh, my father couldn't write and read. They wanted him to write a letter for me uh, to the Netherlands uh, that I had to return. Uh, now, he told them uh, he's an alphabet, he's not able to write. They didn't believe him, so they tortured him several days. After that, they were convinced that he's an alphabet, he, he's not able to write. So but they wrote They were the trying letter. to get you back yeah. by torturing him. Yeah to write a letter to me that I need to go back yes. for his life. Uh, so he couldn't write, so they, they wrote the letter themselves. Um, they confiscated all the properties of my parents. My parents were very rich. Um, they confiscated their house. Um, in ho the whole life, my parents are dead, but till they, their death, they paid uh, rent for their own house to be able to live there. Um, and it's nearly 40 years, but they haven't forgotten me. I even had yesterday an email with the title, 
the ghost from the past. Okay, we will come back to that uh, in a few moments uh, about living in Europe. Um, Chan, can I ask you to tell your story? Sure. Yeah, strange enough, my, uh, my brother, Iranian brother, flew to Turkey to escape from Iran, and we are fleeing to Europe from escaping from Turkey. Um, that's the way it is. Um, yeah, I was the editor-in-chief of a newspaper in Turkey, so we published a story about Turkish intelligence services uh, activities in Syria. They were smuggling arms to Islamist jihadists there. So the government didn't like the story, of course, and they said it was a state secret, you shouldn't have revealed that and they ask two life sentences for a true story. So two life sentences, uh, my life was not enough for two life sentences. I have only one, as far as I know. <laughs> um, that's why, um, so they put me in jail with a, with a colleague of mine, but um, we were released three months later, thanks to the decision of the Constitutional Court which is which is not under control of Erdogan at that time. Um, then I was attacked by a gunman in front of the courthouse and they tried to, he tried to shoot, he shot twice. And thanks to my wife's courage, I was survived from this attack. And uh, then I realized that it would be very difficult for me to live in Turkey anymore. And then, in fact, I was still trying to resist, but uh, in summer of 1915, uh, 16, um, I was in holiday in Spain that this military coup attempt has happened. And then um, the rule of law completely uh, finished. finished. And the first thing Erdogan's new government has done was to arrest the high judges who decided for a release. And they are still in jail now. Um, so then we understood that it's impossible to go back to country. In fact, I didn't flee from Turkey, but I was in Europe. And my family and uh, my lawyers told me you'd better to stay in Europe. Stay there. And yeah. yeah. So I opened the map and tried to find out a place to live in. But of course, your family was also still in Turkey. Yeah, they were in Turkey, unfortunately. Um, when I asked my wife to come and join me in Germany, uh, they stopped her at the gate and in the border and took her passport and said, they said, you're not allowed to leave the country. And we worked three years to get her out, but we failed. And in the end, she left the country in illegal ways. That must be a very scary three years. It was difficult, but I mean, uncomparable to, my, <laughs> to what he's been living through. Um, but of course, our old assets are, were also, also confiscated and yeah. we start a new life from the beginning here in Germany. I mean, here in Europe. And a question for you, for you both. Um, what were your expectations of Europe or of fleeing the countries that you came from? Did you have a, a, a vision of hope, uh, of freedom, of that you could be able to be an individual here? Was that the thought or did you not even think about that? Freedom, freedom, freedom. That was, that was the only one, the only thing I was thinking about. Um, um, I don't know even, maybe you know I was a columnist of uh, the Quality Morning a newspaper in this country. Um, the worst thing happened to me in this country was when the uh, editor-in-chief distances himself from my column and apologized for my column. Um, he oh. went on his knee and I, um, and I refer to Peter Erde Vries. He ref went on his knee and I apologized for a column I wrote and I wrote the French philosopher, Michel Foucault, being himself homosexual, how was it possible that he went to Iran, he sympathized with Khomeini during the time that homosexuals were being hanged in Iran. I saw it with my own eyes. He published an 
uh, opinion article in the same paper in which I was accused of being homophobe. I, I wrote, there is a, someone who calls himself, herself a journalist here. She is regularly at the Iranian embassy in The Hague, and she has the lunch there. She makes selfies with the ambassador, and she writes in her column that Iran is not a dictatorship, Iran is a democracy. How is it possible? Okay, so you came here and you thought you were free to write and think whatever you want, and then you noticed that, that that is not possible. That's not possible because I'm writing against the uh, against the the world vision of my left-wing intellectual liberal friends and who are not able to distinguish between their own anti-American and anti-Israel grievances, between uh, that and uh, uh, the American uh, uh, enemies in the Middle East. And to, to the enemies of mid in, in the Middle East, of the American Israel, yes. are not the same. They are also your enemies. To whom did the editor-in-chief of, of the newspaper apologize? Did he apologize to you? <laughs> oh, but of course not. He called me that morning, shivering from angst. Uh, I'm going to apologize to the people who you wrote about. And, the, and I'm distancing myself and the newspaper from your column. And I told him, then you lose me. I stop. I don't want to be associated with you and your newspaper if you do that. And how do you think it's possible that he felt the urge to apologize? Is that how does the Iranian regime has an influence on that? Look, I'm not afraid of the Iranian regime. I've lived with them, with their darkness, nearly my whole life. I'm afraid of them shifting the... Uh, the uh, um, the, the, the story, shifting the story and making me, an Iranian dissident, also a dissident here in this country. Making me an uh, extreme right-wing person. Making me uh, a, a refugee who is traumatized. Making me a homophobia person. The, that, okay. that shifting, making me a dissident, that's what I'm afraid for. That's my biggest enemy in this country. Okay. John, can I ask you, um, how did it feel to go to Germany and did you feel safe there? And did you feel uh, like you were able to do whatever you wanted to do, to do your work as a journalist? Not really, because, I mean, this is the subject of the panel, in fact, uh, the long hand of the authoritarian regime. So, of course, wherever you go, you have to, you know, be ready to face with their dark faces. Um, so, I mean, Germany has a huge uh, Turkish community, and most of them are Erdogan supporters, so we have to live with them. And even here, you have a huge majority of Erdogan supporters among the Turkish community. And, of course, Erdogan is spreading hatred uh, against us. So whenever someone sees us who wants to be a hero in the eyes of the government, He'll be, you know, um, you can face with a kind of first harassment, maybe attack or anything else. So this is one thing. Other thing is, of course, intelligence, as Iranian intelligence, Turkish intelligence also so active in those countries. And they are doing their best to intimidate, to take you back to country. Uh, they are using Interpol, um, you know, with an issue of Red Warren. So then... You can be, you cannot travel freely in in other countries. Mosques are spreading hatred. Um, uh, media is really, I mean, as a as a journalist, you have to fight with the media. Um, you, so your own media turn into uh, your en your enemies, really. Um, but not only this. When you, if I say something about your first question, Europe. Um, when you talk about Turkey, you, we cannot talk about one Turkey. So there's Erdogan's Turkey and the other Turkey. And same with Europe, really. I mean, 
or we cannot talk about one Europe. So Europe means somehow European governments who are really kind of supportive for Erdogan's regime for several reasons for, for the last 20 years, unfortunately. But there's another Europe, like the Bali is one of them. So really supporting our freedom struggle and really taking side by us. Um, European Parliament, institutions like Reporters Without Borders or PEN, you know, they understand our struggle and they are, you know, fighting together with us. But the European governments really, I mean, they are, as you said, they are begging for, uh, for Erdogan not to send the refugees to Europe. And we are too are dependent on Erdogan. Exactly, and they are really, they are sacrificing their values for, for those interests, unfortunately. And I think there's a distinguish to make between um, people who, who harass you in the streets, who are uh, calling the newspapers, who are uh, on an on a individual level uh, trying to go against what you are trying to do. And there's also the state level. So how does that differ from each other? Or are, there, are they the same? Which state do you mean? Um, the, the repressive regimes who are targeting you, because you just got an email from them, I think. Yes. Maybe you can tell something about that. Uh, some, some years ago, they arrested my mother for maybe 12th time. And they gave her a phone number. And they told her, if he doesn't call us, we'll come again to you. So I had to call them. And at that time, I was advisor of Minister of Justice in this country. And I knew if I call, I would... Uh, I would have an, an, uh, an Iranian intelligence service officer at the other side. So I couldn't call. I asked for permission. Uh, I got the permission. I called the person. And he told me, look, uh, come back to your own country. We know much, much more about you than you ever would know. We know where you live. We know what you do. We know with whom you uh, uh, go out. And we know much more about you than you would ever know. I give you a code. You go to the Iranian embassy in The Hague. You receive a passport. I'll pick you up at the airport, take you at home, and I'll take you back to the airport whenever you like. You have received an amnesty from my uh, supreme leader. So that's one of uh, their, uh, their, their, their way of intimidate you. Uh, and I know they, they haven't forgotten me. Yeah, just yesterday I received an, uh, an email from them uh, with the title, The Ghost from the Past. So I receive regularly emails in Persian. This I was in perfect Dutch. Um, and, and this was about your book, right? Which this was about my book. Released. Yeah. Yeah. I can read the email. I don't know. There is, is there, is yeah. there enough time? Sure. I think that's good to hear. Um, while you're looking at, uh, at it, Chan, is this Turkish government the same? Is it the same repression? Yeah, I can only give you a small example. Yesterday uh, I was checking uh, the Twitter, so maybe some of you saw the, the cell outside. It's a transparent prison cell. We are, uh, that's why I am here for. Uh, it is my prison cell and we brought it here to, to show people what is the conditions in the cell. So it's a transparent thing, so I can be, I, I, I was visible yesterday when I invited. So they put the, the picture of the cell together with me, saying that John Dündar is in the red light area in Amsterdam. And so I'm exposing myself as yeah. the red light area, you know, so. Um, so they're just looking, uh, following f closely, of course. And you have to deal with this uh, hate campaign and shitstorm, troll armies. It's regular. I mean, it's a daily business for us, unfortunately. And of course, whenever you go, wherever you go, you have to deal with the, with the bodyguards, and yeah. you, know, you have to be under protection. And the Turkish government is, you know, uh, proudly announced that um, they kidnapped almost. Um, 80 people from 18 different countries. 
So they announced it. It's not a rumor or something. No. You know, they are just they are proud of it. Doing that, and yeah. yeah, they they kidnapped people and brought back to Turkey, and there are some people already disappeared. And this is a country who is a member in the European Council, and and many European governments, you know, had good relations with Erdogan, and they don't want to annoy him at all. You re remind me the fact that in the last 40 years, the Islamic Republic of Iran executed 540 Iranian dissidents outside of Iran, from which two here in the Netherlands, in The Hague and in Almere. In the bright daylight, in front of the eyes of their children, they were shot dead. And they uh, take hostage. Uh, Masih Ali Najad was just here. They were planning to take her hostage from United States, not from a country, not from Turkey, which uh, happens regularly, but from United States. All, sc all scumbag regimes are, have the same ways of acting. Yeah, they, are, they are learning from each other. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's hear the email. The email. Um, the title is, We was the ghostwriter, who was the ghost? Um, we was the ghostwriter from that book, this book. Who was the ghostwriter of this book? Uh, and heeft die een realiteitscheck gedaan op jouw verhalen? The site doet anders vermoeden. And has he done a proper fact check of your book, of your fables? Denk je dat als we Dijsselbroem en Hoekstra gaan vragen of jij ze ooit hebt geadviseerd het een belletje bij ze doet rinkelen? Do you think that if we ask names of two Dutch ministers, uh, they ever know that you have advised them? Nederland is toch maar gezegend met die Persische genie zoals jij. Nederland is blessed with a Persian genius like you. So they try to... Just kind of compliment. <laughs> <laughs> it is really. <laughs> yeah, it's good that you read it that way, yeah, definitely. Um, so they try to question your authority, actually. Yes. Um, they try to, look you, to, to make you look like... Um, That's exactly what they want. They, they, they just want to crush the, your self-confidence. They just want to make you small, that you doubt about yourself and think small and try to give up. They are too small for me and their crimes are too huge to be silent about that. I will never, never, never be silent because what I have seen in Iranian regimes, you talked about your cell. I was in a cell with 39 other people in a small cell, two and a half by one and a half, 40 people. I have seen many, many executions of children, young people, they were just children. Um, the, pre the president of Iran since last June is Ibrahim Raisi. He was the Islamic Revolutionary Officer of Justice of the city I was raised on, Karaj. He is personally responsible for my torture and the torture of my father. That's not, I have forgiven everything. In 1988, he was personally responsible for the execution of thousands, of thousands of political prisoners in Iran. They hanged them in two days thousands of political prisoners because they wanted to, uh, 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 to empty the prisons and they just dumped their bodies in the mass graves. Those mass graves are now there. And I have uh, told on Iranian free television, I have looked at the television camera and I have told him uh, crimes against humanity will not be um, uh, forgotten. One day you will come before a judge 
and I will be there to witness of your crimes. So this is what keeps you going? Yes. Um, we have to go to our other guest, but one final question. Um, do you feel that you are supported by the, the Dutch government or the, the German government? Is there any um, support system in place for people like you? How can, how can I feel I'm supported when my Minister of Foreign Affairs goes there and bows for the Iranian president? I, I, I should, I, I try to not feel uh, treated. How, how? I don't know. How, how, how would you? Same thing. Unfortunately, just just last week there was a debate between the the ambassador, Dutch ambassador in Ankara, and Erdogan. So I mean, they were asking Erdogan to obey the international law and the decisions of the Court of Human Rights, and Erdogan was really ang got angry and declared them all to persona non grata, and she sent a tweet uh, in Turkish saying that, of course, we don't intervene your internal business. That's the meaning of the tweet, unfortunately. So they are ready to you know, obey Erdogan's role because, I mean, they have interest in Turkey. So it's really difficult for, for us to trust the Ger German or European governments as long as they have really huge interests, economic, political, military yeah. interests. In the diplomacy always goes first. Yeah, but I mean, when it comes to, for example, there was an American pastor in Turkish prisons, and Trump asked Erdogan several times to release him. When he resists, Trump said, you will have the economic consequences of it. And the week after, he was freed. So same another journalist with German origin, in Turkish jails, and same thing has happened to him. And German economy minister said that we will put sanctions on Turkey, freed in a week. So you have the power to, you know, get this result. But of course, at the same time, those governments have interests and big business selling arms, doing business with them. So they don't want to annoy those, those guys. And. So then you have to fight against not only your own government, but all the Euro European governments together with him. <laughs> Look, there was an uh, inauguration of this new president I was just talking about in Iran. All the European Union ambassadors were there, the, uh, and from the European Union. We are um, for human rights, we are against discrimination, gender equality, but when it comes to the uh, to our economic uh, belongings, uh, suddenly overnight we will become we would become uh, diplomats, and there are di diplomatic values we have uh, we, we need to uh, to attend to. Yep. That's 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 such a uh, such a shame. So we don't believe in the governments, but we believe in <laughs> institutions like Tibali. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for. Uh, <laughs>